Dr. Lisa Gentili, and I teach French and medieval history at the Well-Trained Mind Academy. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My academic background is quite wide-ranging. Initially, as an undergrad, I studied international politics, international studies, and eventually did grad work in French language and literature. Um, I've lived in Provence, making goat cheese on a goat farm. I've studied international relations in Geneva, Switzerland, and politics in Paris. And before coming to work at the Well-Trained Mind Academy, I worked and taught in an American study abroad program and the French University in the southwest of France, which is a totally different region called the Tarn, the Tarn region. And that was for almost 10 years. So at the university level, in both the US and in France, I have taught all kinds of classes, including health policy. And that is because my dissertation in my doctoral work was on the French healthcare system. So I've taught classes in English for health and social science students in the French university system. I taught comparative uh, politics, comparative health policy classes, and then most frequently French language, culture, and a little bit of politics added in. So I've spent, as you can imagine, much of my adult life living between France and the US. Now, what is most gratifying about my teaching at the WTMA? I would say the most gratifying aspect is um, when I witness my students' progress over time, that's really quite gratifying, um, whether it's with language acquisition or developing their research and writing skills. I also enjoy that moment when I notice students are finally comfortable with each other and then and they've created a sense of belonging together, they're a sort of community, um, even despite the being virtual together online and somehow their personalities and their humor shines through in our interactions. What are my teaching methods or my approach in the classroom? I would say that I am a bit old school. What does that mean to me? In some respects, um, it means that I don't coddle my students and it, no matter what their age. And I try to cultivate a sense of independence. So the way that the cores are structured, um, the students are expected to take responsibility for their schedule and their work, and they need to pace themselves. And so in so doing, they acquire time and management skills, time management skills along the way, which are applicable elsewhere as well. All that being said, in my French classes, you can expect that the syllabus and all that you see in the calendar and in Blackboard will lay out all the expectations in detail. So students, no matter what, they tend to get into a rhythm early in the year. What do we do in the classroom? Much of class time is actually spent working through lessons together, the lessons that introduce the new material, and so we're often working on exercises as, as an entire class. And then regularly, I have students participating in group activities and projects, and, it, and then quite often online vocabulary games. And that's one of their favorite, favorite things that they do in my class. And as often as possible, I have students speak over the microphone so that they get as much oral practice as they can. I myself also use as much French as I can, though it's not entirely immersion in my classroom. And sometimes it's just easier given time or constraints and the virtual nature of the classroom to explain a fine grammar point in English. What do students do outside of the classroom at home on their own? First, students are expected to keep up with the vocabulary, workbook and grammar exercises on their own as indicated in the syllabus and Blackboard. They also watch videos related to the grammar questions we're studying each week. 
And there also might be an occasional multiple choice quiz. At the end of each unit, students work on an individual or a group project, either in class or on their own, depending. And then finally, there are three major take home assessments each year. At the end of the year, the students put into practice all that they've learned while we read a novel together and we discuss it together in class. And that I find is always a great way to top off the year. On the other hand, the history classes that I teach are organized differently, of course. Before each weekly meeting, students read on their own and complete a quiz before we meet together as a class. And then during class, we either do a sort of rapid fire Q and A uh, review, and then we might explore some other outside materials relating to the reading for the week. And then on other days, I have students break into groups for other activities. So they might spend the hour creating crossword puzzles or designing their own quizzes. Um, or coming up with sensational news headlines and all of these activities based on the reading that they have been doing before class. And then after students, students are expected to, after class students are expected to clean it, complete an exit ticket, and that's part of their class participation grade. And lastly, I'd like to point out that in these history classes, my emphasis throughout the year is on giving students constructive feedback on written summary summaries that they do all throughout the year. These are really important, important assignments in this class. So my focus, and I think it's fairly successful, is to help them improve their research and writing skills. And I'm always impressed by the progress that they make in such a short time. Now let's see a sample of one of my French lessons. So this would be a typical lesson, uh, introducing some new material and some reviewing some old material on past tense, doing the passé composé and the imparfait and learning how to tell a the, the beginning of a story, um, different ways of beginning a story and then using the imperfect and passé composé in that context. And this is for French two level students. Um, it's probably something around beyond halfway through um, the year. So this is how it would go. Alors, bonjour à tous. Comment allez-vous aujourd'hui? Nous allons aujourd'hui travailler le suspense. Nous allons apprendre à créer le suspense en racontant le début d'une histoire. Alors, nous allons apprendre comment raconter une histoire au passé. N'est-ce pas? Au passé. Donc, comment est-ce qu'on fait ça? On fait ça... On raconte une histoire avec le passé composé et l'imparfait, n'est-ce pas? Donc, dans cette leçon, nous allons raconter une histoire au passé avec les deux, avec le passé composé et l'imparfait. Alors, avant de faire tout ça, vous avez donc ici des objets des personnages et des lieux hein? au tableau ici. Alors, je vous montre, euh, j'ai besoin de ça. Alors, vous avez des lieux, hein? des personnages et des objets. Alors, vous allez me dire avec tout ce qu'il y a sur le tableau, est-ce que c'est un lieu, est-ce que c'est un personnage ou est-ce que c'est un objet? Nous allons identifier chaque chaque image. Alors, par exemple, ici, le désert. Est-ce que c'est un lieu, un personnage ou un objet? Voilà, voilà, vous dites que c'est un lieu. C'est ça. Je vais... 
comme ça. Je vais prendre un stylo. Donc, le désert, c'est un lieu. Très bien. Un clown. Un clown. Est-ce que c'est un lieu, un personnage ou un objet Voilà, voilà. Un personnage, vous dites, c'est bien. C'est ça, c'est un personnage. Et pour euh, le réveil, un réveil. Voilà, un objet. C'est un objet. Une maison, une maison. Voilà, un, un lieu. Du gâteau au chocolat. Très bien. Un objet. Des lunettes aussi. Hein? C'est un objet. Il y a beaucoup d'objets ici. Euh, on va dire qu'un bus, c'est un objet aussi. Et des bananes également. Un champignon. Ça, c'est un objet. Pareil que... La pomme. Hein? Une pomme, c'est un objet aussi. Et pour un cowboy, un cowboy ici. Le cowboy. Voilà, un personnage. Voilà, vous allez voir tous ces, toutes ces images dans les histoires qui suivent. Donc, euh, des livres. Ça, c'est un objet. Une artiste. Hein? Une artiste, c'est un personnage. Et un avion. Voilà, un objet. Puis, le château ici. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Un lieu. Voilà. Ça, c'est un lieu. Et un poisson c'est un animal, ça peut être un objet ou un personnage. Hein? C'est un être vivant. It's a living being, so we could say it can be a personnage. Voilà. Donc, il y a tout ça dans les histoires qui suivent. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'on fait? Alors. Ah, il faut que je, je fasse tout ça. Il faut effacer, effacer, effacer. Voilà. OK. Ici. À quelles images correspondent ces textes? Alors, c'est l'histoire de deux bananes qui vivaient dans un château. Elles ont décidé... Il oh, y a un accent qui manque. Il y a un accent qui manque. Non. Ça. Elles ont décidé de partir en voyage, n'est-ce pas? Et dans l'avion, elles ont rencontré une pomme. Alors, quelles sont les images ici qui correspondent, qui correspondent à ce texte? Vous voyez, il y a d'abord... Les deux bananes, hein? Les deux bananes. Des bananes. Il y a, voilà, le château. Il y a l'avion et une pomme. Tout ça paraît dans l'histoire. Alors, dans les, ce début d'histoire, ça c'est un début d'histoire. Je vais vous écrire ça, que je trouve, ah oui, le texte, ici. Ce sont les débuts, hein. c'est un début d'histoire. Ça commence, hein. c'est l'histoire qui commence. Alors, c'est l'histoire de deux bananes qui vivaient. Alors, il faut identifier les verbes. We're going to look at the verbs here. We're going to see which are in the imperfect and which are in the passé composé. So, I'm going to highlight. Uh, let's see, where can I do that? I need a highlighter. 
Est-ce que c'est ça Voilà, highlighter. Alors, ça c'est un verbe, un verbe et un verbe. Hmm? Donc, on commence souvent l'histoire avec une, un verbe à l'imparfait. You usually start, you set the scene with an, an imperfect, the verb in the imperfect. Because it's something that's, like, it's the conditions that are ongoing. It's, some, it's the setting of the scene when something else happens usually, right? So here we see, vive, vivez in the, in the imperfect. And then something else, something happens, right? The scene is set and something happens and, you, and that's in the passé composé. So you see here, ça c'est... Uh, See if I can draw this here for you or write it. Ça, c'est imparfait. Um, just roughly, imparfait. And here, you see, elles ont décidé, c'est uh, au passé composé. Ça aussi, c'est au passé composé. Okay, ça, c'est un exemple. Autre chose, c'est l'histoire de. That's a way of starting a story. It's, it's the way it's you, you um, use this phrase, c'est l'histoire de, it's the story about, and then you can bring in the story. Okay, on va regarder la deuxième histoire. Je vais d'abord effacer tout ça. Alors, deuxième histoire. Il était une fois... So this is the way you start, another way to start a story. Il était une fois. That's, the, that's their once upon a time. Once upon a time there was is all included in that phrase. Yes. Il était une fois un clown qui portait des lunettes. Il mangeait du gâteau quand le réveil a sonné. En même temps, son poisson arrivait à la maison. Quand tout à coup, un champignon est arrivé à la porte. So what do we have here? Un clown. Hmm? Voilà, le personnage, un clown. Nous avons du gâteau, oui, du gâteau au chocolat. Et un réveil. Puis le poisson et le champignon. Hein? Bien. Alors, où sont les verbes? On va regarder où sont les verbes dans le texte. Alors, ici... Je vais prendre... Pour souligner... Un clown qui... Déjà, il était une fois. Hein? Un clown qui portait des lunettes. Il mangeait du gâteau. So, that's all the things that were... Ongoing, or they're in the process of happening, but it's all past tense, right? When something else happens. And when the something else happens, that's often, that's in the passé composé, right? It's marking a particular moment in time in the past. It interrupts something else that was happening already. Um, and you use the passé composé to indicate that. So here we have one. Il mangeait du gâteau quand, when something else happened. Le réveil a sonné, but a particular moment, right? An intervening action. En même temps, at the same time, son poisson arrivait à la maison. So it was something that was... something that was happening, right? When another thing occurred. Quand tout à coup, this was a sudden occurrence. Un champignon est arrivé... À la porte. Bien. Alors, donc, nous avons des imparfaits et des passés composés. Vous vous souvenez des terminaisons? Je vais vous les mettre ici. Je vais les taper comme ça. Les terminaisons des, de l'imparfait. Vous avez A, I, S, A, I, S, A, I, T. I O N S uh, I E Z E A I E N T comme ça 
les terminaisons de l'imparfait. So we're just going to do a little bit of practice um, translating from English here, seeing if you we can figure out how to say these things. So we're using passé composé or imparfait. So for example, I wanted to go to the store, but it was closed. That's a situation where the, um, the state of wanting is continuous in the, you know, in the past. It's not it's like something happened suddenly. So we say, je voulais, c'est le verbe vouloir, je voulais aller au magasin, mais c'était fermé. So the state of the the state of the store is also that it was closed, right? So that's all in the imperfect. That's imperfect tense. She was happy, but then something happened. Okay, we don't know what happened. What's the following? What follows? But we know that something happened at a particular moment, and that's obviously going to change her state of being. So, elle était contente. I'll just use puis quelque chose est arrivé. Right? We don't know exactly what happened, but something happened, and that is in the passé composé. Okay, next one. Uh, ensuite, when I was little, I believed in the tooth fairy. So that's all things that were the Continuous, right? They were ongoing things in the past. When when I was little, that's it's not at a particular moment. It's just a long period of time. Quand j'étais petit, je croyais, le verbe croire, à la petite souris. We've seen that before. La petite souris. That's the tooth fairy in French. It's the little the little mouse. And last one here, when I was five years old, encore imparfait, when I was, quand j'avais, hein, c'est le verbe avoir, quand j'avais cinq ans, je vivais au Texas. That's all ongoing in the past. But then the move, uh, the act of moving, that's a particular event, that's in the passé composé. So... Uh, je vivais au Texas, mais après, hein, mais j'ai déménagé, hein, déménagé, assez composé. So this is a little tip for you, and you'll see why we use this in just a minute here, but Passé composé with avoir or, or with être. So what you want to do is ask yourself to decide whether you're using avoir or être as your auxiliary in the passé composé. You say, can I, with the verb that you're looking at, do that to some to that do that something? Not to something, but can I do that something? Can I read something? That's the first example here, right? Yes. So we use avoir. So in other words, is this action, this is the main idea. Is this action being received by an object? Fill in the blank with the verb. So this blank here, hey, right? With the verb you're trying to write in the passé composé. If the answer is yes, you'll use avoir. If the answer is no, you use être. So here's an être verb. You should know aller is an être verb because it's a Dr. and Mrs. Van der Tramp verb. But if you didn't and you use this, um, this tip, then you can figure it out, right? You say, can I go something? No. Um, so you use être. What about manger? Can I eat something? Oui. Alors, c'est le verbe avoir. Can I run something? Actually, yes. You can run a marathon. Right? Uh, so that's one is avoir. Can I speak something? The verb parler. Oui, I can speak French. Alors, avoir. Okay, so this is where this comes in handy for something that's a little bit more complicated. 
some verbs in French can take either. So there's always these wonderful exceptions in French, right? They can use either être or avoir, and that depends on the context. So these are verbs that are kind of versatile. Um, we're going to see some examples here. So depending on how it's being used in the context. So that's why I'm using that question. Is this action being um, received by an object? That's when that comes into play. So the examples that we see here, this first one, it's a common thing that we say, right? The verb monter. Monter means not, uh, to go up in one instance, but then it can also mean to take something up. So in one instance, to go up, that's the subject is actually doing the action. There's no object. But when you take something up, you have an object, right? Take the object up. So then in the instance when it's, so multi, once again, is a Dr. And Mrs. Vandertramp verb, and that's why you're using être there. And it's the subject that is in motion. When you say, I take something up or I took something up, you use the verb avoir. So you see here, these examples. Uh, voilà, je suis monté au troisième étage. I went up to the third floor. There's no object. Um, the action wasn't being received by an object, just the subject doing the action. But j'ai monté mes valises. Right? You recognize that's the that's the object, right? Mais va uh, that's not what I want. Uh, pas ça. I want a highlighter. Yeah, voilà. Donc mes valises. C'est l'objet direct. It's the, it's, it's the direct object of the verb. J'ai monté mes valises. So since this action receives an object, you use avoir. So here you have avoir. J'ai monté. And then in the first instance, it's je suis monté. And you remember when you use uh, être with these verbs in the passé composé, you have agreement here, right? So that's feminine. We're just gonna just for to finish up. We're gonna do a. We're gonna go, go through these and ask: Is this avoir or être? So le verbe lire. We already said we can lire un livre. Donc ça c'est c'est bien um, le verbe avoir. Hein? Avec venir. You should know this anyway, but this is a Dr. and Mrs. Vandertre. That's the verb. That's with être. Passer chez quelqu'un. So that was that instance where we're just saying we're moving, we're going some, passing from one place to another. Passer chez quelqu'un. Chez quelqu'un is a prepositional phrase. That's not a direct object. So that is the verb être. Passer une note. You see what I have underlined here? That's the direct object. Alors voilà, dans ce cas, c'est le verbe avoir. Monter l'escalier. So once again, uh, you're not taking something up, but you're, in a sense, you are. You're taking the the stairs up, right? You're not physically taking them, but it's still a direct object. So there's a little bit of debate about this in French, but technically it's a, it's a noun that is an object of the verb. So here we use... Avoir as well. On dit j'ai monté l'escalier. Right? Here in this case, monter ici, you're physically taking your groceries or your, your shopping up. Once again, direct object, c'est le verbe avoir. Alors, le verbe sortir. Sortir, c'est to go out. So that's physically, like the ver the subject is just moving. That's the verb être. Mais sortir la poubelle. What do you think that means? If you think about it, it's not to go out, but it's taking out la poubelle. That's a favorite word often. La poubelle, the garbage. Take the trash out. C'est le verb avoir. Okay, manger, boire, c'est simple. Hein? C'est le verb avoir, avoir. Et aller et arriver, 
to go and to arrive. Those are both Dr. and Mrs. Vandertramp. Those are herbs with Etre. So the group activity after all that is to using the um, images here, the back. So the images that we have here with the lieu, personnage, et objet, the group activity is Donc, vous allez choisir un lieu, un objet et un personnage pour écrire un début d'histoire. Avec ces trois éléments, vous inventez une histoire où n'importe quel élément peut... Élément avec un « et » peut être le ou la protagoniste de l'histoire. Soyez créatif. Et utilisez pour commencer... So you have these three ways of starting your story. Il était une fois, il y avait, ou c'est l'histoire de. Alors, en groupe, à deux ou à trois, you'll be in groups of two or three. Uh, you're, so you're going to choose one of each, a place, an object, and a character. And you're going to cre create a, a story out of that. And just as you saw earlier, um, you can use any of them to be the protagonist, the hero or the heroine, right? It doesn't have to be a person. It can be an ob the object or it can be the place. It can be any of any of the three. Voilà, ça c'est pour la leçon pour aujourd'hui. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir.